Yeah. Um, okay, so this is the pin tool lecture for the Wednesday 1 to 4 class. Um, and let's get started. I'm Mike, your demonstrator. I don't know. We have to call these demos. So I call them demos. Um, okay, so we're going to be using three tools. Um, the selection tool, or also known as the black arrow tool. The direct selection tool, also known as the white arrow tool. And the pen tool. Uh, let me zoom in on that. So the hotkeys for those are V, A, and P. And if you mouse over those, you will see those hotkeys. So V, A, and P. Those, those are the three tools that we're going to focus around. Primarily the pen tool, but uh, you kind of need to go to the select direct selection tool quite often. There is one unfortunate thing is when I zoom in on my monitor, I can't... Oh, wait, does it actually zoom in on the mouse? Okay. Okay, so you can see the mouse. Now, whenever using the pen tool, go ahead and press P to bring up the pen tool. Oh, and let's do one other thing right quick. Make sure that your foreground is like mine. So you can press, what is it, default fill and stroke down here. So let's make sure your foreground is white and, you're, and you've got a stroke uh, black. So go ahead and press P to bring up the pen tool if you haven't already. And you'll notice that the pen tool always has like a little symbol by it. In this case, it's an asterisk. The pen tool is trying to tell you what's going on as you're doing it. A sip of coffee here. So in the case of the asterisk, asterisk, the uh, asterisk means that you're going to start a new path. That will become important later on. We'll see. I'll show you guys. But let's start with the basics. So the pen tool, you click, you create an anchor point, and it is probably going to be green, I think, for you guys. It is green, incidentally, because inside of the layers palette, and if your layout is like mine, the default, you should see this little layers palette, which looks like two sort of layers on top of one another. It's green because the working layer, the layer that we're working, we're currently on, I went ahead and selected green. So the fact that it's green is just because I'm working on that particular layer. Notice that all of our other layers are locked and we can't work on them. Those are the image, those layers are holding all of our images that we're going to trace for um, your lab assignment. So you click the point and then I'm just going to simply click another point kind of off to the right here. So two points, Illustrator automatically draws a line between the two of those. These are called um, corner points. I'll go ahead and click another one. And another and kind of just create some sort of rectangle. Starting off kind of simple. And notice as I get to the final thing, a final kind of closing off my path. Right now we have what's called an open path. I haven't closed off my rectangle. It's still open, right? So it's an open path. As soon as I close it, and notice that my, usually it's pretty obvious that you're closing a path. I mean, you kind of know. But sometimes when you get complex shapes and things like that, um, it's sort of hard to tell. You'll get a little zero. Uh, let me zoom in on that for you guys in the back. Oh, wait. Where'd it go? Oh, no. What did I do? What did I zoom in on? Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. There we go. We could have a little circle, right? That means I'm closing off this path. Oh, I, I made a triangle. Okay, whatever. <laughs> that's fine, too. Okay, so uh, triangle. All right. So that's kind of the, the first step, right? Okay, so the next step, I'll go ahead and just press uh, V to bring up my black arrow tool and then the delete key because I just kind of playing with that. I might have to press delete twice because I did something weird, but you guys should. Okay, so let's go, let's kind of uh, mouse over to the U of H logo. Incidentally, um, you can hit the space bar key. Did I undo? I just deleted it. I mean, it's just, this area is just kind of a little bit of a workspace. Uh, you guys can use it for practice. This area right here, this uh, artboard. These are all different artboards. So the U of H logo, go kooks. Um, so what was I going to say? Okay, it's with the pen tool active. So press the P key for the pen tool. And notice the asterisk sign. That means I'm going to start 
a new path, right? I need to change, now white isn't going to work for my U of H logo, so I'm going to need to change it to cougar red. So I'm going to double click my foreground color, which I'll find down here. See the fill? Does everybody see that? Double click that. It should bring up this dialog box. I'm going to double click the R field, which is kind of this one in the middle. And I want to type in the values of 200. Then I'm going to push the tab key to go to a new field. So now I'm in the green field, or G. 16. And then hitting tab again for the blue field, 46. So for R, G, and B, you should see 200, 16, 46. And I'm going to hit tab again to get out of the blue field, which will show me that color. This, incidentally, is cougar red. So if you want to save it for later. Uh, 216, 46. So 200 red, green 16, blue 46. So it's like a football move or something. Yeah. Play. Football play. But double click green. Or you've already got it. Just click OK. Oh, wait, no, no. Uh, just click OK. You're just in a slightly different view. Don't worry about it. Okay, and I'm going to start tracing this. Um, the U of H logo is a JPEG that I've created a tracing layer out of. Uh, when you create tracing layers, uh, which I will, I don't know if I'm going to show you right now, but we will show you eventually. Yeah, yeah, when we discuss the layer, we'll talk about that. But this is a tracing layer. So we can't draw on it, but we're drawing on our own layer. So I'm going to click the top left corner. And it really doesn't matter where you start. And um, while we're doing this, I wanted to mention something. Adobe loves the modifier keys. What are your modifier keys? Alt, Alt Option, Command, and Shift. All of these modifier keys will do things if you hold them down while you're doing other things. So in the case of Shift, if I hold down the Shift key, it will constrain my new point to a 45 degree angle or in this case, a 90 degree angle. So if I click here, and I'm holding down the shift key, and I kind of click up here, it's going to automatically move my point down here to a 90 degree angle. So let me kind of show you that. It's a little bit hard to see. Um, holding down the spacebar key to bring up my, uh, and, and the spacebar key is another modifier key. Um, it will usually bring up the hand tool, which allows you to kind of click and drag around your document. I'll use that a lot. I'll try to mention it when I do. So if I hold down the shift key, and so let's say I kind of click a little bit up to the top there. Notice that it, auto, it automatically made, and I'm holding down the shift key on my keyboard, it automatically made that point at a 90 degree angle. I know it's really hard for you guys to see in the back. Let me do it once again. I'll, I mean, I'm just going to continue drawing this shape, just kind of tracing around. Holding down the shift key because what do I have? I have all points here. And let me zoom out a little bit. I'm actually going to zoom in on my document by pressing Command Plus. And I've got a little bit of an elbow here. You guys don't have to be super accurate. And I'm just going to kind of continue tracing around my logo. And as you kind of continue tracing around, if you started where I started, you'll notice this problem. That my fill is getting in the way of everything. And Illustrator will kind of try to fill, op right now our path is open, right? It's not a closed path. It will kind of try to fill in open paths. But the, the fill is getting in our way. Now I could go in and take the fill off and then re-add it back on later, but I don't want to do that. There's actually a much simpler way. I can change how I view what's going on. Now I'm not actually changing anything. I'm just changing how it looks, how it views to me. So if you go to View Outline, and notice the hotkey of Command Y. It will bring up outline mode, which kind of very simplifies my path quite a bit. Right? And I'll just continue holding down the Shift key and clicking around. OK, let's talk about another thing that the space bar does. And incidentally, um, the shift key, the alt key, the command key, and the space bar 
all sort of do the same things depending on what you're doing. The shift key usually does this kind of 45 degree angle thing or it makes your shapes uh, perfectly uh, symmetrical, I guess, or symmetrical in terms of both axes. But what the spacebar key does, I want you to go ahead, everybody kind of follow along with me. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, here we go. For you guys in the back, go ahead and click off, make, make a wrong point, but don't let go of the mouse. So click way up here. Oops, no, don't drag. Just click and hold. Now hold down the space bar key and drag that point down. The space bar key allows you to move your things around on the fly. So there's lots of little tricks to help you get really fast with the pen tool. And I'll go ahead and changing my points like that. And you're more than welcome to trace this U of H logo, whether or not you choose to trace it. Let me zoom out here. You could choose to trace uh, the U and then the H or the actual physical outline of the object either way. This is the U of H logo is not part of your assignment, but it's good practice. So welcome to do that. And um, let's see, what's the next thing we need to talk about? points with error keys. Okay, another way to kind of fix your points, and this is the less preferable way to do it. Let me zoom in a little bit. So grabbing the pen tool, reselecting my line. Um, if I if I kind of click over here and then I keep going. I can always edit any of my points with the direct selection tool. Now this is kind of a weird quirk of Illustrator is that the command key, if you hold down the command key with the pen tool, it will bring up your last used selection tool. So we have two selection tools, right? What are they? The black arrow tool or selection tool and the white arrow tool, which is the direct selection tool, which is going to give us more minute selections, right? So if I hold down the command key, notice that my arrow is black. That's because that was the last tool I used. So what I need to do is press A and then P. So now the white arrow tool was my last used selection tool. More often than not, you will need the direct selection tool as opposed to the selection tool. And then with the, now holding down the command key, just kind of a convenience, I can now select that point and drag it up into position. So you can always go back and fix your path. So never worry if, you know, it's off a little bit. You can always go back and fix it. And then I'm going to continue with my path. Oh, wait, what has happened here? <coughs> I've started a new path. I, I don't have a joining line between these two anchor paths. This is an yet another quirk of the pen tool. And that is, if you edit your path while you're working on it, it will start a new path. The general rule of thumb is to close off your path, to finish your illustration, and then use the direct selection tool to fix it. Now, this actually isn't terribly hard to fix. And notice, what is my cursor saying? It's got the asterisk. What does that mean? It's going to start a new path, right? I can reselect. I can kind of start again by hovering over the anchor. And notice that I have a new little icon there, a, a forward slash. So if I click that, and then now look, no asterisks by my pen tool, so I can continue <coughs> down my path. And I'll hold down the space bar to kind of bring over that.
Okay, so that covers corner points. We've created corner points this whole time. But of course, objects in the real world aren't exclusively corners, so we have other ways of doing that. I'm going to go to my desktop, and you can kind of uh, minimize Illustrator for now by pressing this uh, little yellow guy right here. And I want you guys to open up ellipseexercise.ai in the folder that you opened up. And I don't, I don't have any linked images in here. Let me zoom out. And all I've done here is drawn an ellipse, and I've created some guides for us. Now the guides are going to get in our way initially, so let's press Command semicolon to hide our guides. Command semicolon, and it should toggle hiding and showing your guide. So if you see those blue lines, press uh, Command semicolon. <coughs> then I'm going to grab my direct selection tool. And I'm going to click and drag a selection over the entire circle, which allows me to select multiple points at, at a time. It's similar to how I did it with the selection tool, but if I use the selection tool, it will uh, create this box around it. It's going to get in my way. So I'm going to grab my direct selection tool. And then I'm going to go to um, select, let me remind myself, Same. no, wait, uh, object. Where was that option? Select object, straight points. Oh, here it is. Uh, so I want you to go to select object direction handles. Let me zoom in on that for the guy, people in the back. Direction handles. And go ahead and um, Watch me uh, for now. I know it's kind of hard to like watch me and do it at the same time. So for this part, watch me, and then we're going to draw this circle ourselves. So as now with the direct selection tool, I can manipulate these handles. Um, these handles are called uh, sometimes they're um, I didn't my notes. They're called Bezier handles or. Um, what is the other name for him? I thought I wrote it down. Well, anyway. Huh? Bezier handles? Okay, we'll stick with that. Um, now, what I have here is different from a corner point. I have a smooth point, or a line kind of transitioning out of it. And notice that as I grab this kind of Bezier handle, notice that it kind of acts like a magnet to the line, and that curve wants to, to drag up with the handle. But notice also that I also have this kind of seesaw going on, where the as I drag one handle up, the other handle goes down. And the, as one handle goes up, the other one goes down, right? That means I have a smooth point. I can kind of drag it in any direction and kind of force that line to whatever I want. Um, OK, I'm going to press the V key. And you guys can follow along now. Go ahead and select the object and press delete. Uh, you might have to press delete twice. Uh, press delete twice if you still see a bounding box. OK, now let's bring back our guides and let's draw that ellipse. So uh, to bring back your guides, press command semicolon. And it can be a little bit confusing which guide to find. So. I want to find, does everybody have the rulers up? I want to find this top guide at five and a half inches. And there's a, there's a corner point. I mean, there's a, um, there's a corner right there. So that topmost at five and a half inches. And then I'm going to click and drag, which is the way that we create smooth points. We click and drag. And I'm going to click drag my handle out to that intersection. It should snap. Yeah. I'm going to go slow so they can kind of do both, I think. So has everybody clicked and dragged there? And then I want to grab, let's see, uh, at not, not quite at four inches, but just a little bit under, there's another intersection point. And I want to click and drag out a handle. And notice that I'm clicking down when I do this. 
whenever you click and drag out handles, you always go in the direction that you're illustrating. So no, if I clicked and drag, it's very common for me to accidentally click and drag and want to go up. And notice, look what it does to my line. It's kind of the wrong way. So you could illustrate this clockwise or counterclock. Or you could either do it clockwise like I'm doing it or counterclockwise if you want. But whatever you do, always continue to drag in the same direction. And then I'm going to grab uh, this bottom point. I'm going to click and drag. And things should be snapping around. I'm going to click and drag. And don't close off the path yet. I'm going to pause the video. Um, So kind of continuing here from uh, a brief pause, I'm going to click and drag. And notice that as I go to my circle, I'm getting that icon again, that closed circle path icon. But there's kind of a quirk that when you close off your path, I'm going to click that point and drag out. It forces me to kind of drag out a new handle. This is yet another, so kind of we got those three quirks, right? The command key is going to select your last used selection tool. The, um, the pen tool will uh, stop continuing that path if you uh, kind of edit it as you're working on it. So that's quirk number two. Quirk number three is that when you close off your paths, you kind of have to redraw those handles, which is kind of annoying. but. I think they actually fixed that in CC 2014. It's kind of like a little trick, but I don't know what it is yet. Still working on that. Okay, so has everybody drawn the ellipse and they kind of see what I see, at least to some most extent? I'm going to press the command semicolon to hide those off. And one of the harder things to do, one of the harder things to kind of understand is these curves. Um, because we have these two points and they sort of vaguely like they yeah, they create lines But I don't know what it's really gonna look like until I start drawing it And a lot of it is practice and that's what your assignment is going to be It's gonna be a lot of practice and I'm gonna work with you guys and, and we're gonna do that uh, Do one of them with you and then you guys will continue to do them But notice something about these two Bezier handles. Okay, so one way to think of it is that one of these Bezier handles, this top one, is kind of emitting from that line. And then the second one is kind of going into the second point. So you can kind of think of it in a linear way. Notice another thing, that the Bezier handle takes up about a third of my curve. Now, it's not exact. It's pretty close. It's kind of just sort of roughly a third, right? And then my curve is about a third open. And then it, it finishes off with about a third. You could kind of think of it, uh, well, there's a rule of thirds in photography, but this is not, obviously not photography. Uh, you guys are smart. Um, so this is kind of a general rule of thumb. It's actually one of the harder things to do. And I want you to go ahead and um, save this file. And I want you to remember, uh, if you're having trouble drawing a line, you can always, you know, uh, grab the ob or kind of select this object and, and think of an ellipse or a circle and sort of look how it does it. Because a lot of times you'll be drawing an object and you'll want part of this curve. You'll want a curve that kind of reacts like this as part of your drawing. And you can kind of look at this as an example. And that's the best I can do to help you uh, with this for now without actually like going over specific, uh, well, there's not really not really any other way. So practice is going to make this a lot easier. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that, and you're welcome to save it if you so wish. And I'm going to go back to the pen tool exercise.ai, which you should already have open. And I'm going to, uh, I'm using the spacebar key to grab my handle tool and sort of dragging down, press command plus to zoom in on that a little bit, to the heart, which is kind of the fourth guy on here. 
So does everybody see this heart like I see it? Okay, so we talked about um, corner points and shift constraint angles. Uh, I'm just reviewing my notes to make sure I covered everything. Oh yeah, don't don't forget where that select um, object direction handles. It's uh, a lot of times when you're working on paths and especially with these Bezier handles, it won't show you those handles um, on, uh, on points that you're not already on. So if you kind of moved on from those points, right? Like we, when we did the U of H logo, we kind of continued on. Those old points, it's not gonna show me if I had curves for that logo. That logo doesn't have curves, it's all straight lines. But if I had smooth points as part of that logo, then those Bezier handles wouldn't show up. And it's actually kind of convenient because those Bezier handles, because if they're all showing up, they all kind of go everywhere. But you can always bring them up by going to select object direction handles. So remember that's there. It's kind of convenient. And that will help you bring that up. Okay, so let's trace this because I need to go over a third kind of point. So we have corner points, which don't have any direction handles. And we have smooth points, which have direction handles that are attached to one another. They're kind of like uh, congenial twins, right? They got go, one goes up, one goes, the other one goes down, okay? Congenial twins, what am I talking about? Um, more coffee. Um, that was in the news the other day, I don't know. I was thinking about it for some reason. Okay, let me grab uh, P for the pen tool. And the third kind of point is called a cusp point. Cusp with a P. And I'm going to click and drag out a handle. In this shape, um, a general rule of thumb and kind of a, a beginner's mistake is to try and create point, like try and do too many points. For, so for example, uh, maybe a point here and then do this one and then do this one and then do this one. You really want to try and minimize how many points you create. And again, it's just going to take practice. And when y'all are doing this incidentally, don't worry about being perfectly on the line. Uh, if we have any perfectionists in here, it's okay if it's a little bit off. I'm not so worried about uh, it being perfectly on the line. It's not my interest. My interest is you guys using the pen tool. Show me using the pen tool. So don't worry about uh, if I'm a little off. I don't really care. Or if your if your heart looks a little bit wobbly, you're never really gonna get yeah. You're never gonna get it quite right. So I'm gonna click and drag out a handle from the sort of uh, I don't know what to call this. The butt of the heart. <laughs> Let's call it the Nicki Minaj part of the heart. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to click and drag it out quite a bit. You might, maybe you zoomed in too much. You might, hit to, might have to hit Command minus to zoom out a little bit. And then I'm going to click and drag out another handle at the bottom of my heart. And I'm, I'm going to have a hard time getting this perfect. Again, I'm not worried about it. And I can always go back and fix it. Now, dragging out this bottom point, don't let go of the mouse. If you did let go of the mouse, I'm sorry, I meant to say something, but go ahead and hit Command Z and then drag out this new handle because we're going to introduce the next modifier key of Adobe, da -da -da -da, the Alt Option key. The Alt Option key tends to convert points from smooth points to cusp points or corner points. So if I haven't let go of the mouse, and I hold down the Alt key, it will break those handles and allow me to create a cusp point. And I'll drag that roughly out somewhere where uh, I have my other one. Unfortunately, the rule of thirds, it does apply here, but it's kind of a weird, it's a very long curve. So, And then, before, don't close off the path yet. Notice that as I mouse over, I'm getting that little circle, which means I'm going to close the path. But if I start drag, if I click and drag, notice what it does. It cre it automatically creates that smooth point like we did before. What do I want to do? I want to hold down the Alt key and then close off my path. And look like look at that. It automatically keeps. So let me redo that. So I'm kind of right here. And then I'm going to close off my path by, so I'm really just doing this in two points. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Before you click or after? 
Uh, before you click with this one, yeah. So hold down the click, uh, hold down the Alt key before you click. That's a good point. I need to mention that. Uh, and then drag out that point. And notice that my heart, it's not perfectly right because I didn't get that first Bezier handle because I really didn't know how, how far to draw it out. It's hard to know. It's really hard to know, especially with a, a shape like this. That's why I'm having you do a shape like this because it's kind of hard to figure out these kinds of curves. Now I am in outline mode, uh, which you guys may be too, so you're not going to see the fill. I'm going to hold down the command key to bring up, does everybody see the white arrow tool with the command key? If you don't, press A and then P right quick on your keyboard, A, P, which will grab your direct selection tool and then back to your pen tool. And I can grab these handles and fix them. So go ahead and grab them out. Because we've closed off our path. What did we do? We finished our path. But if I'd started editing my path while I was working on it, it, it kind of makes this slower workflow. So a smooth point is kind of a point where the line curves. It continues through that point. A corner point is a corner, right? And a cusp point is like a corner, but it has curves emitting, he has curves coming from it and coming into it. So I have, I have a cusp point here. So as you're drawing, consider, do I need a curve, do I need a smooth point here? Or do I need a corner point? Or do I need a cusp point? So as you're drawing, so this is a cusp point. The ellipse, that was our smooth point, and our U of H logo is our uh, corner points. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so kind of doing one of the other shapes here. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm probably going to want to remove my fill. So I'm going to select the fill and then press this little, I uh, see this little box with a, um, it's kind of hard for me to zoom in on the edge of the screen right there. This little box with a red line through it. So select your fill in your toolbar. I'm in the toolbar right now. And then select none for this shape. We may want to, oops. Yeah, we don't want it fill getting in our way. Although Phil's a nice guy. Bad jokes, all over the place. Okay, so I'm gonna click and drag a new point. And remember our ellipse, what is this? This is really just kind of like part of that ellipse here, and then part of the ellipse there, and then part of the ellipse there. So kind of remember, we had a point at the top of our ellipse, so I'm gonna click and drag. And I want about a third of my curve. Let me zoom in a bit so you guys can see that a little better. Yeah. Click and drag. I might change that later in the file. About a third, because I'm going to put a point at the top of that line, right? It's, it's really hard to tell how much to drag out, but just somewhere around a third will get you really close. I've had a lot of practice with it, so I kind of know, but. And if you don't drag it, just say, for instance, you just. Oh, if you just created a point and you need a handle, you can hold down the Alt key, which will bring up this tool and you can drag out a handle. And I'll hold down the space bar. Uh, you can always move things around with the space bar. We're gonna kinda cover some of these little advanced things when we get to the Twitter logo in a second. And then I'm gonna click and drag out about a third. It's okay if it's not perfect. And then kind of coming down, following our line, clicking and dragging out about a third. Out about a third. Out about a third, out about a third, and out about a third. And then you can grab your direct selection tool by pressing the A key or the uh, command key, I should say. You should get used to the command key. And you, if you need to see, sometimes you can't see the anchor points. Another way is just simply selecting that point. I know it's really tiny, but you can kind of select those points I'm holding down. D and A and P. Yeah. Okay. So you can kind of select those points, and it, whenever you have a point selected, 
you can uh, grab these handles and kind of change them. So these are all smooth points along here. You can always go in and fix them. So I did this in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Um, you should be able to do this in four points. It's possible to do this in four points, actually. Yeah. So if I click and drag here, and then click and drag here, I can actually kind of create that curve like that. So if you're feeling a little bit more advanced, uh, if you're feeling like you're picking this up a little bit quicker, um, go ahead and try to do this line in four points as opposed to the seven that I did. How do you um, break, like to move to the next picture, how do you break the pen tool to stay on that and create a new one? Ah, uh, just take direct. the direct selection tool, which you can bring up by, you know, the command key, um, and then just click anywhere off to the side. That'll deselect okay. anything you're working on. Yeah, so the way to deselect an Illustrator is uh, if you, whenever you have a selection, just kind of grab any selection tool and kind of click off the object. Be careful not to click on some other object or you'll select it. Okay, we have another zigzag line. So I'll kind of click that. Oops, what do I need to do? I need to drag in the direction that I'm going. So clicking and dragging that. Um, this one's actually kind of weird. Um, and for my people that are a little bit advanced, try to do this in two points. Two points, if you're feeling uh, rather adventurous. Here's, how, here's roughly how you would do this in two points. Which is actually going to require me, ah, no. So holding down the command key to bring up my white arrow tool. So here's what it would look like with two points. Um, if I did it with more points, um, let's redo it. Clicking, dragging out, following somewhere about a third. And then clicking and dragging out. Okay. And now we have this object. What are uh, there are only two kinds of points in this object. What are they? What are the two kinds of points in this object? Where is a cut? I don't know. There's no cusp point. Nope. These are corner points, right? Because there's no, there's no, there, uh, this is a straight line. There would not, there was no, there's uh, no curve coming out of it. So this is going to be a corner. And then what's the other kind of point I would also have to make? A curve. A curve. A smooth point, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click here. And just like our box before, I can just click down here. And then I'm going to need a smooth point about right here. And I missed it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to hold down the space bar key to kind of move my point around as I'm working on it, which is kind of nice to do. If you feel like you really need to do get that done there. And then remember, this is exactly like our ellipse. Just follow that same pattern, the ellipse. Kind of clicking and dragging there. I might, uh, if you hold down the shift key while dragging, you can constrain the Bezier handles to 90 degree angles. Again, the shift key always tends to want to do that. So it's kind of useful for uh, ellipses and things like that. I can, I can force myself to drag at a 90 degree angle. Then I'm going to click, this object is fairly symmetrical, so I'll click and drag out a new one. And then I've got a corner point, so all I need to do here is just click. Let's do it again. This time let's, uh, let's start in the ellipse. And I'll kind of find the, t the, the tip of the ellipse here. And holding down the shift key to kind of constrain my handles. Clicking and dragging. Yeah. So let me start here. Zooming in, clicking and dragging, holding down the shift key to kind of constrain those handles. Holding down the shift key. 
Here I have a corner point, so all I need to do is click. Click here to kind of conjoin, to join that. I have a bit of a smooth point, so I'll click and drag that out like that. Holding down the spacebar key to uh, move that line around. Oops. Oh, it's sticking around. Okay, anyway. And then what is it going to do when I finish my path? I'm going to have to click and drag out, redrag out that handle, which is kind of annoying. Go ahead and pause the recording while I and press P. Okay, so we're doing the Twitter logo now. Um, obviously one of the harder logos. So again, we see our ellipse pattern a lot in here, but we have lots of what kind of points are these? Cusp points, yes. Because we have kind of a corner, but it's emitting a, 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 a kind of a circle, right? So I'm gonna create lots of cusp points. How do I create cusp points? The Alt key, yes. So what I'm going to do, and there are actually lots of different ways of working, but I'm trying to show you my favorite way. Uh, the, really, it's kind of like the best way to work. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag. And uh, following my ellipse pattern, I might, I could probably get away with not putting a point here, but I'll just go ahead and do it. Dragging that out. Now I have what kind of point here? A cusp point. So I'm going to click and drag. And remember that rule of thirds. It's always kind of hard to tell at first. And there are a lot of subtle curves in this, so it's every point in this one is going to have a uh, handle emitting from it. Now before I've let go of the mouse, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag this guy up, roughly in line with that line, because there's not much of a, let me zoom in for you guys in the back. So I'll click and drag, and then hold down the Alt key to break that handle. If I did let go of the mouse, I could still kind of, you know, click and drag, holding down the Alt key, and drag that handle up like so. And this isn't okay to, it's okay to do that. It's not going to mess up your path. And then I'm going to click and drag out here. Again, I need a cusp point, so Alt key, dragging down, dragging out, clicking and dragging, holding down the Alt key to break that handle, bringing it up. Clicking and dragging, holding down the Alt key to bring it down. Some of these I could probably get away with straight lines. Clicking and dragging. Um, I'm actually going to have to zoom in, zoom out on this guy a little bit because this is kind of a longer curve. There we go. Holding down the Alt key again, and uh, kind of roughly. Now I could do this curve in a single. In one and two points, but uh, so I'm going to drag out roughly about a third. So I'm planning on putting a point right about here, I think, just to make it a little easier on myself. I'll put a smooth point in the middle there, just to kind of make it a little easier for myself. I'm going to drag out about a third. Oh no, that was weird. Okay. Whoa. Okay. What's going on? All right. And then clicking out, what kind of point? I want a smooth point this time, so I'm just going to click and drag, not holding down the Alt key. And I want this to come out about a third. And then clicking out and dragging, holding down the Alt key, dragging that back around. I'm going to get a little bit faster, dragging out. And for these kind of wings, I want my handle about a third. Dragging out so that that uh, other handle is about a third. Dragging out like that. Dragging out. Oops. Holding down the Alt key. Dragging out. Dragging out. And I missed it a little bit, so I'm going to hold down the space bar and move that point around a little bit. And dragging out about a third. And I need a cusp point here, so when I close off my path at the very end of this uh, Twitter logo, what am I going to have to do? 
hold down the alt key, right? Because if I don't, it will uh, give me a smooth point, which is going to be this weird, yeah, my Twitter guy is going to have some uh, brain problems. And uh, mostly for the video and kind of demonstration purposes, I'm going to do the Apple logo a little bit faster. I know you guys are working are more buried in your screens right now, but it will be at the end of the video uh, on YouTube. So I'm going to click and drag this shape out here. Actually, I'm going to plan a Well, you know what? That's going to do that anyway. So I, I've got kind of a, a long ellipse, so about a third for the little leaf. About a third. I've got a cusp point here, so I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Drag that around, and um, holding down the Alt key again, clicking and dragging out that handle. Apple logo is going to contain a lot of, it's going to have uh, cusp points and smooth points. But notice, look at the bottom of the apple. That's very, very similar to one of the exercises we just did. Um, you can really start anywhere on in here. So I'll kind of start over to the right here, clicking and dragging that out. Maybe holding down spacebar to kind of get it just right. And my line's going to change direction, so I'm going to kind of click and drag that out. Oop, that's going to cause me problems later. So let's stick to our ellipse. Clicking and dragging that out like so. Holding down the shift key to constrain my guys. And then I've got a cusp point right here, so I'll click and drag. Holding down the alt key to kind of create. And my line needs to kind of, so i got to drag my handle kind of back the other way to kind of have my shape. Remember, they're going to act like magnets. And uh, again, here's our ellipse pattern, or our, our circle. So just kind of following that pattern of what the ellipse looked like will get us really, really close. Clicking and dragging, holding down the Alt key. Again, just part of that ellipse, just like we did in the pre previous thing. That shift key. Clicking and dragging, holding on the shift key. Clicking and dragging, holding on the shift key. And uh, I've got kind of a short handle here. I'll go ahead and just create another point just for the heck of it. I can always go back and fix this a little later. And I'm going to close off my path. This time I have a smooth point, so I'm not going to hold down the Alt key. So I'm going to click and drag, and I've got to kind of redraw that handle. I've got a little bit of an oddity here, so I'm just going to go back and, uh, let's see, grab my direct selection tool by pressing the A key. I'm going to drag this path around, move that handle, or move that point, and kind of get things a little bit closer. First time you do these apples, it's going to be a little wobbly. It is a pretty hard logo if you're just starting off on this stuff to do. All right, good luck, guys.